Joining us this week for Touch Base in Seoul is a New York-based illustrator who's been described as a visual world builder. His intricate portrayals of both everyday life and fantastical realms have garnered a global fan base. He's also been highly sought after by some of the biggest companies in the world for special collaborations. And last year, he was invited to hold a solo exhibition here in Seoul at the My Art Museum. It's called Memory Cabinet, and it's currently on view until March. To discuss his artistic journey and shed light on his latest art exhibition here in Korea, we have the artist himself, Ilya Milstein, joining us now via video call. Mr. Milstein, hello, and thank you for your time today. Hello. Thank you very much for having me and for that lovely introduction. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Let's start at the very beginning to learn more about you. Can you tell us where did your love for art and drawing originate? Of course. Um, well, like most people, I drew frequently as a young child. Um, unlike most people, though, I just didn't grow out of it. By the time I was six or seven, I began writing barely comprehensible multiple page comics. Um, so I think that the world building potential of visual narrative appealed a lot to me. And I read comics obsessively as a kid, especially Franco-Belgian comic books like Asterix and Tintin. Um, I've worked with many mediums, but I always return to drawing. I think it's distinguished by the intimate scale of the process, the universal adoption of, of it as a medium historically, um, in across all sorts of cultures, um, the immediacy of the pen on the page and the affordability of its widely available materials. All of these, all of these elements, um, appealed to me enormously, um, have, have appealed to, to me enormously for years and still do. Right. I understand that you're also a self-taught, uh, illustrator. So then how did you perhaps uh, get the confidence to uh, pursue this as a, a career to uh, become a full-time artist? Um, yes, I am self-taught as an illustrator. Um, around seven years ago, I decided to move from Australia to New York and to try to find a new career. I, um, I was interested in trying something new. It felt like the right period in my life to maybe try and begin a new chapter. And New York felt like the right city for me to try to do that in. Um, I hadn't drawn seriously for many years by this point, but, um, but when I arrived in New York and I was really open to any opportunity that might present itself to someone with my inexperience, I saw how widely illustration was used in publishing, advertising, branding, and so on. Um, so in New York, I got the idea of trying to return to my original love. Um, I sometimes find it useful to think of my life in the abstract and the idea of being an illustrator in New York City really appealed to me as an early to mid 20th century archetype. Um, so I tried to do it. It was a little bit clumsy at the start, but I had, uh, fortunately I had other work to keep me ab ab above water and I had the very good fortune of landing a job with the New York Times not too long into this process about um, under a year, uh, under a year after moving here, that um, in fact that particular work is shown as um, within the within the within the exhibition at my art museum, and that work got some notice, and then I received some more commissions, and I feel that I've been on that trajectory really since then. Right. So it's essentially a, a sort of a, a dream come true then, uh, that image that you had of uh, the life you wanted in New York and you uh, managed to achieve it. It's quite a success story. Can you tell us about your uh, drawing style as well? Uh, you mentioned uh, some of perhaps your early uh, inspirations such as uh, uh, Tintin and Hergé's illustrations, but understand that you draw more inspiration perhaps from Hergé's predecessors such as uh, cartoonists uh, Gluyas Willems and Frank King, the Ligne Claire style of art, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. Um, I do love I do love a, an early 20th century um, um, tradition of American newspaper comics, um, certainly including uh, uh, Glass Williams, Frank King, 
um, George McManus, um, who was a huge inspiration for Ajay. I'm also, though, drawn to um, uh, traditions of, of woodblock um, print, uh, printmaking, uh, especially those from, from East Asia, um, so including Korea and Japan and China. Um, really, like a long tradition of work that I think combines flat, typically naturalistic colors and clean black lines, which we can call lean clair, but is not just limited to comics. I think it goes back as far as um, Egyptian hieroglyphics on, on, on wall and papyrus. Um, anyway, this is all to say, my drawings are, I think, in that, in that way, natu naturalistically colored with mm. flat colors, illustrated with black lines. Um, but what might distinguish them is that they're often heavily, heavily detailed. Um, Yes. I would say your illustrations, not just detailed, but they're, they wonderfully capture uh, a scene, a moment or tableaus. For example, a couple enjoying some uh, downtime in, on their living room sofa or a bustling New York street. You also blend fantasy in your work as well, I understand, and nature. Where do you get your ideas from? Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, well, inspiration can come from everywhere. Uh, part of the reason why I enjoy working in a heavily detailed style is that it allows me to put so many of my thoughts, observations, and interests into one place. Uh, the first real illustration that I made in my current visual style was actually a critique of, of visual minimalism. And so this uh, verbose maximalist uh, compulsion of mine is deeply, deeply rooted in how I work and uh, in my particular visual style. So for finding inspiration, it's everything from strolling and trying to looking around like like a hungry magpie, <laughs> trying to find things that, that uh, strike me, to uh, you know burying my nose into 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 like the dustiest magazine at the bottom at the bottom of a dusty box in a secondhand bookstore and so on and so forth. It's just to find things that feel striking, whether in my life or in the world around me, that I can hopefully translate or reference in future works. Interesting. So it's a sort of a, a rejection of uh, minimalism, uh, this style that you've developed of yours. So tell us about your current exhibition then here in Seoul. It's called uh, Memory Cabinet, and it's been uh, captivating audiences at the My Art Museum in Seoul since last September. Um, where did this opportunity, how did this opportunity come about? Um, well, it's not entirely for me to say. Um, I think I've had the good fortune of my work resonating with audiences in Korea for a little while now. Around four years ago, um, an illustration of mine was licensed by um, a publishing company there called Across Publishing for the cover of a nonfiction book, um, the title of which I believe translates to On Study. And in my understanding, this book uh, outperformed expectations and in turn uh, introduced my work to, uh, to a wide audience in Korea. So since then, I've had the good fortune of working with a few Korean companies, including LG on a series of projects. And I think that work brought my, I, th I think all of that brought my work to the attention of the team at my art museum, who um, I'm really grateful for and that they saw, a, they, they believe that my work uh, belonged on walls in a context in which people could really spend time with it and see, uh, see several hundred pieces together as a part of a broader picture. Right, indeed, and audiences have been, uh, visitors have been really enjoying it. Uh, you've been getting rave reviews uh, online uh, as well. Tell us a bit more about the exhibition itself. What did you want to uh, show through it? Um, well, I try not to be too prescriptive with my work in general, um, either to myself, uh, sorry, either to others or to myself. Um, I generally prefer it when people bring their own interpretations to what I do, and I often feel that their understanding of my work is more compelling than my own. Um, I'm just making these things after all. It's not necessarily my job to understand them. Uh, with that said, the, the exhibition is something of a retrospective containing the chief works I've made over the past seven years. 
Um, and the subjects and tones within them vary enormously, but I think that they're married by a sense of uh, curiosity, maybe. Uh, so I hope that the if the viewer takes something, I hope that they take the collection of works as a suggestion for ways that one might interact with one's surroundings. Uh, in particular, making sure to um, take note of small things that are over easily overlooked in uh, urban environments, in domestic uh, spaces, and uh, in one's like personal and emotional life. Um, I think that slowing down and paying attention to seemingly insignificant things is uh, something that can help us understand the world and our place within it. Right, I think visitors are uh, feeling that as well. Some reviews I have, I saw online, uh, they capture that overall feeling, I would say. Uh, some reviews here, it says, uh, it's full of small pleasures. It made me think about life calmly. I'm left with uh, warm memories. What do you think of these uh, reviews? Um, I think they're very touching. And they. Um, I think that does speak to something that I hope to achieve with some of my work. While some things I do touch on, I think touch on broader and maybe uh, trickier, more um, emotional themes. I've I've always been interested in work that is that is maybe wistful, that is interested in describing smaller things, smaller human moments. Um, like you like you describe um, a, an individual just taking comfort in in a patch of sun in their house, like a like a cat would. Um, these things can be as interesting to me as. Um, as a scene of like emotional calamity or disaster, um, so I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that viewers have been finding, you know, have been finding these works as peaceful to be around as I find them to make as well. Um, you were of course in Seoul as well for the opening of the exhibition, and you also held two special events for visitors: a tour and a and a book signing. What was it like being in Korea? Oh, it was amazing. It was my first visit there. Um, I'd wanted to visit for a long time. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was great. I Beyond beyond uh, those experiences with the museum, which were incredible and very, very touching, having an opportunity to meet people who uh, really liked my work and had traveled to see it was um, really one of the highlights of, if not the highlight of my career. Um, and just the experience of being in Korea was wonderful. Um, if I, I did make, I did make some time to be a bit of a tourist. I, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I visited, um, like the Bukshon Hanok village and, um, some of the old palaces and museums. I really love a lot of, uh, Joseon art and design. So getting to see things like that in person was, uh, extremely rewarding. And I spent several days on on Jeju Island as well. So um, I left um, I left with an extremely positive impression of the country and its culture, and um, also just deeply inspired by the things I saw and the people I met. Um, I hope to be back soon. Could we expect maybe any pieces that are inspired by your time in Korea? Some scenes of Korea at some point in the future? Do you think? Absolutely. I'm working on a couple right now, actually. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. So we can look forward to that then. Korean fans uh, can look forward to that. I think we're very curious to see what you made of Korea. That's really interesting. Okay. And finally, just to wrap up, I um, I like as a, a self-taught illustrator as well, we thought maybe you had some words of advice or tips for any uh, listeners who may be <clears throat> listening, who may be looking to uh, enter the illustration industry and looking for some uh, words of inspiration. Um, I will say that um, I, I I take pride from being self-taught, but um, it's not. If if I could do it over again, um, maybe I would have gone to university. I I am a <laughs> believer in tertiary education as a way, um, primarily of really being able to build a community and receiving some very important training. Um, for me, I needed to make a lot of mistakes. Um, to figure out what I think were very obvious things to other people. Um, but I will say whether um, as an illustrator, you went to university, 
um, or not. I think it's a paramount that um, when that 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 uh, illustrators make work that is unique and in turn communicates um, a unique person behind uh, that flat image. Um, trends come and go, but if you do something that's true to you, um, you found something evergreen. Um, and because of this, I think I, th I also think it's important uh, to lead, you know, for artists to lead interesting lives, um, to pursue different experiences, to challenge oneself, to improve oneself, and so on. Um, it, the interesting work will follow. Great. And with those words, uh, we will leave it there. It's been wonderful to have on the show today. We've been talking to Ilya Milstein and his exhibition Memory Cabinet is on view at the My Art Museum in Seoul until March 3rd. Thank you once again for your time today. Thank you very much for having me.